Добро вечер, гледате Еврозум. Ова издание е посветено на уникатниот пример на словачка и незините падови и успони во европските интеграцијски процеси. На оваа тема во Еврозум вечер ваќе гледате. Словачка е новата членка Звезда во Европската унија. Членството во НАТО и унијата и донесоа развој и пораст на стандардот. Кога влегува во НАТО, почна буквално да доаѓаат многу сериозни фирми и многу сериозни инвеститори. Зошто Европската унија ги замрза преговорите за членството на Словачка во времето на популистот Мечиар? Политикал прешер ту джастис систем. Прешер ту медиа, мисијус оф полис и секрет сервис. Политичката енергија Мечиар ја трошеше на бркање на домашни предавници и странски платеници. Словачка заедно со нивните соседи, чеси, поляци и унгарци беа најнадежните четири држави за први нови членки на Европската унија по падот на Берлинскиот зид. Но на самиот старт уште во раните 90-ти, словаците се сопна на популизмот на нивниот тогашен премиер Владимир Мечиар. После неколку години убедување и толерирање во 96-та, Брисел сепак се реши на радикален чекор. Ги замрзна преговорите за членство на Словачка. Брисел оцени дека со политички систем како оне на Мечиар нема што да се разговара. За каков систем станува збор? Одговорот го барав во Братислава. For example, uh, this government concentrated power. They, uh, they approved some legislation which uh, gave them additional competences. Then, for example, quite frequent uh, violations of rule of law, political pressure to uh, justice system, to judiciary. Vladimir Mechar succeeded to obstruct referendum, which was uh, organized about uh, uh, introduction of direct presidential elections. Then, for example, in the parliament, they completely neglected opposition. Uh, they approved a, law, uh, a lot of anti-constitutional laws and constitutional court then you know, released the rulings that uh, this and this law is uh, in contradiction with the constitution. Then there were some efforts to use uh, police organs for intimidation of political opponents. There was not a real political idea behind it. Not at all, not at all. Mainly it was looking for what voters wo uh, want to hear, what they want to listen to at the moment. Then they were declaring it. But of course, uh, behind all their activity was to gain some benefits from being at the power, from being politicians. People like to listen to what they think they want to listen, what they think they want. So. Uh, the common sign of uh, political parties like, like Mechiar was that they had a very strong leader who had a sense to listen to people and then to act uh, in a direction they wanted him to act. So uh, he was listening to them and then he was saying things they wanted to hear, they wanted to listen to. I knew Mechiar from the beginning, as he, when he was coming to Bratislava to the, our cent, centra, Central of Public Against Violence movement. The, it was a revolutionary movement which uh, uh, was at the start, starting point of the, the new uh, uh, movement in Slovakia. That is to say, he was coming among us and uh, subsequently his, he separated for, from us and, and uh, started to create his own uh, demagogical, demagogical power. He was demagogy, he was pop populist, kind of, kind of populist politician. I am the only leader, this was his idea, the, the, the people around me are my servants, nothing more. That is to say, everyone who was some political personality must go. Ете така во 90-тите владееше Мечиар, поради што неговата држава претрпе големи штети. А сега слушнете со кои образложенија Европската унија ги замрзна преговорите и како популистот Мечиар се однесуваше кон критицизмот на официјален Брисел. The main remarks were that first violations of rule of law, instability of institutions, interference of the government into civil society, insufficient protection of minority rights, uh, pressure to media, uh, misuse of uh, police and, and secret service organs. So all this stuff was uh, the reason why Slovakia was disqualified. What was the reaction of the Mechiar government towards the, the, the 
European criticism. Very rejective and very critical. So, uh, Mitchell's government blamed the European Union that the European Union is using double standards, that the European Union is specifically biased against Slovakia. Of course, he identified himself with Slovakia. So, all criticism which was addressed to, to him, to Vladimir Mečar, to his government, uh, this politician automatically presented as an unjust criticism of the country and of the people. Uh, and of course, uh, there were some situations in which Mechar even rejected to communicate with the representatives of uh, European Union, either the European Union as such or member states of European Union. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, there, there was a case when somebody gave him the march and his uh, an ambassador of. Uh, I don't know whether it was an American ambassador or a, I can't recall really what was it about, but uh, another Dimash came and his uh, foreign minister said, oh yeah, he's just ambassador. We've got a million of ambassadors like he is <laughs> here in Slovakia. So, but these things were more funny, you know, that it, it was already the start of, of, the, uh, of the end, you know, yeah. the beginning of the end. But uh, it was one, uh, you know, side of, of the issue. But the second side of the, of the issue was that, in spite uh, all these efforts to present this criticism as a biased, unbalanced, and you know, not uh, somehow supported by the real facts, it was you know, Mechar's idea that European Union neglects all facts. But in spite of all these efforts, the majority of population trusted more to European Union than to Mechar, and it encouraged democratic forces in Slovakia to be more strong, efficient, more inventive, to uh, prevent uh, electoral victory of Hazardes, of Mechar's party. So it means that it was a positive effect to the population because population started to realize that if this guy will be still in the government, our chances to be in the European Union will be close to zero. Една од суштинските забелешки на Брисел беше и она за односот на Мечиар кон граѓанскиот сектор, невладините организации и медиумите. Сите сличности кои ќе ги препознаете во наредните искази не се намерли. He was against everything what was called civil because he was accusing them that they are paid by Soros Jews or, or Hungarians, which is a so-called enemy of the Slovaks. It's always when you don't know what to do, you say he is with Hungarians. At the time it worked. It's not working now because we had a, uh, since 98 until uh, 2004, we had a uh, Hungarian parties in the government and nothing happened, obviously. Mm -hmm. But at the time it worked. So he was creating enemies and he was fooling the voters that he will protect the country uh, in a fight against these enemies. He considered this so-called third sector of civil society as his enemy. So in uh, some newspapers, uh, official newspapers of Hazardei, so the party, party, party newspaper, uh, it was a series of articles written by their propagandist, propagandists who blamed NGOs that they are serving as agents of foreign influence, that they are defending, uh, you know, uh, interest of transnational monopoles or external external forces, uh, uh, neighboring countries, especially Hungary, because you know it was quite clear to blame uh, for for people, you know, for people not very well informed about the situation, to blame, you know, that it's a combination of Hungarian irredentism, Western monopoles, uh, I don't know, all these, you know, uh, negative factors or factors with negative connotations. So, of course, uh, we were enemies for Mechar. It was danger for him. Uh, it it, uh, it uh, ex explained it as a something which is dangerous to the country, to, to Slovakia, who, what is, uh, uh, what is uh, not acceptable for him. We, we were all the time in, in some confrontation with him. Only confrontation, nothing more. His interpretation was that we were diminishing the name of the country abroad, in the, uh, yeah, that we, we were uh, uh, making against the renommee, 
renome of Slovakia, for it is of course it was personal attacks. I have some also anonymous letters, uh, uh, plenty of anonymous letters. When I was a rector of my university, my secretary was given in a fascicle. They are some fascicles, two fascicles of this kind with anonymous letters, for example, from the people of uh, Mechiar, from the, the, this, uh, his supporters. That I am, uh, that we, we are paid by the, by the dirty, dirty money from West. Yes, the, this was the main argumentation. Jews, of course, you are, the, the, uh, accusate us that we are Jews, supported by Jews, by Israeli for example, and so the, this kind of argumentation all the time. So they were media, independent media, but they were under very strong pressure, political pressure and administrative pressure, and of course public media, so uh, state-sponsored mm -hmm. radio and television, they were absolutely taken uh, uh, in the hands of uh, uh, ruling coalition. So it means that these uh, public service media, they served as a, really, as a tool for the government and independent media, independent uh, radio stations and uh, one private TV channel or printed outlets, dailies and uh, weeklies, they were under, under the pressure, under administrative pressure. So it means that the atmosphere was very, atmosphere was very conflictual and government and people from the government ministries, representatives of the ruling coalition, they were frequently attacking media, blaming them that they are expressing anti-national, anti-state views, that they are harming the interests of uh, people of the Slo Slovak nation. So the situation was quite unusual for the real democracy. Cenata na populizmot i avtoritarnosta na Mečijar zažalja platija i mnogu mladi obrazovani Slovaci koji u toa vreme moraše da si je barat srekjata nadvor od granice na nivnata država. Yeah, sure, sure. But left country, the left country to seek a job, and even uh, more more people, they were forced by the atmosphere. They didn't like it here, so everybody was looking for uh, to get the best best school in the Czech Republic, which was quite open and is quite open to Slovak students, or to get to London to work, or or to Germany. And after that, when the atmosphere changed in '98 and 2000 the people were coming back and that was obvious. Kako ide? Slovacite se odvažije i vo 98-ta mu rekoa zbogubna mečijar. Dojdo na vlast demokratskite sili. Slovačka se budi. Povtono započuvat pregovori so Evropska tunije do 2004-ta godina se nadohraduva zagubeno to vreme i zajedno so drugite Slovačka stanuva členka na Evropska tunija. Po promenite vo 98-ta naglo počuva da se podobruva i ekonomska da sostoje vo državata. Za promenite i za toa kako deneska se žive vo Slovačka razgovara so našiot Nikola Božinovski, uspešen biznismen koji od 1990-ta godina žive vo Slovačka. Nikola, vi živete od vo Slovačka od 90-ta godina ste tuka, znači ja pratite Slovačka od demokratizacijata, ne zina ako ne je nešto porano. Ono što mi interesira mene je koja je promenata vo životot, vo sekvednevijeto na Slovacite od ona vreme malko poteško koje go ima so mečijar i pot od kako počnala da pregovarat za členstvo vo 99-ta, to je vključiteljno i za členovanjeto vo Evropska tunija. Da, во Словачка се случија главните промени од моментот кога они влегоа во НАТО и после тоа последователно влегоа во Европска унија. Се до тој момент Кенјев беше проблем прво разделувањето со Чешка, значи тоа тој период беше доста тежок и малку владењето на Владимир Мечар кој не беше така така популарен во странство. Така да за нив клучен момент беше влегувањето во НАТО, повторувам и... Што им донесе тоа? Во секој случај донесе една е, голема е, сигурност на странските улагачи, затоа што од моментот кога влегува во НАТО, е, почна буквално да доаѓаат многу сериозни фирми и многу сериозни инвеститори. Зборам приватни инвеститори, приватни фирми, Не дискутирам за сите тие фондови кои после тоа дојдоа од Европска унија. Вам бизнисот кога ви тргна? Мојот бизнис почна да, да иде во, во точно негде во горни, нагорна 
sfera od 2006. pa posle toga. Oni vlegova 2004. Međutim, od 2006. počne vek je osjetno da se podobruvat... Kako žive je denaska prosječna slova? Pa, prosječen... Ne se najbogatite u Evropa to, a mislim, se gleda ovaka, ne, teško da ne... Da, daleko je to da ka se slovacite od najbogatite v Evropa. Međutim, mislim, da ka so vleguvanje to v Evropska unija, so prezimanje to na euro to, so prifaćanje to na euro to, relativno žive je stabilno i sigurno. I mislim, da ka prosječni od slovak žive je sosema v red. Što znači vo Slovačka postojat razliki među bogatite i siromasite, ali ne taka dramatični. Na kraj, da vi čestitam za ova dobra roba, ovi prekrasni primeroci na Mekintoši, imati audio centar vo Skopje, vo trgovskijo centar. Koja je razlikata vo prodažbata? Što odslikuva dosta i standard od nama? Pa da, to se brojki koji čovjek saka ili ne saka ga primetuva. Nažalost, vo početok od тоа да кажам од 95-6 година до 2000-та во Македонија бевме подобри во продажба него во Словачка зборам за сегментот за домашниот сегмент меѓутоа веќе од 2000-та година почнуваме да одиме надоле а словаците почнаа да одат нагоре разликата е доста голема да не зборам точни бројки за тоа што може да ќе делуваат фрапантно вако сме ги тош можете во Скопје продадете Da, sme prodali, međutoj... Nisu ga videli ovo? Godišno, da. Sme prodali, međutoj, godišno, ako prodademe jedno parče, to je uspeh. Ok, mi posakujem uspeh vo biznisu, pred sve vo Skopje bi neki me interesira životni standard na mojte sogradjani. Blagodarem. Pod sljedstvoto vo Evropska tunija i vo vedovanjeto na Evroto, Slovačka stanuva se postilna evropska ekonomija. Bratislava spored...